Time for the Alakine defense with white pieces, and I opt for you this time. Semish attack against Alakine defense. So let's immediately go with the moves e4, knight f6, e5, knight d5, and knight to c3. It's not considered to be that popular anymore in the world, and uh, amongst like top GMs who used to play these variations, there are especially two GM names. Grandmaster Baklan from Ukraine and Zvyagintsev, uh, ex Vratsky student from Russia. Uh, those are both like pretty original GMs and they both like to uh, play, you know, like unstandard type of games. Uh, let's go with knight c3. So after knight c3, they certainly have to take this knight on c3 and all these other kind of players who played like this, they will take on c3. Uh, if for some reason somebody just brings that knight back to b6, a uh, very interesting moment of the game begins now. You're not supposed to play d4, it is just going to transpose into some other type of games. Play f4. What I like about f4, <coughs> sorry, is that you just go with knight f3 and you decide uh, whether you want to go with d4 and when are you actually going to do that. So after d6, knight f3, d takes, f takes. It's very important to remember this uh, practical uh, decision to take always by f pawn because then you just open up f file and get ready for the king side attack and action along the f file. After knight c6, uh, black's idea is certainly to play bishop g4 important accuracy with a4. Usually we chase away this knight on b6 with this a4 move, threatening a5. They have to play a5 themselves and we go with bishop b5. What do I get with this bishop b5? Uh, I kind of uh, prevent this bishop g4 by black because uh, you will entirely have problems with the knight on d5. But also I'm preparing myself for d4 and d5 and for short castle on the king side uh, and I mean uh, action on the king side so after e6 d4 bishop e7 knight to e4 it's also very important to uh, remember uh, this motif of bringing your knight from c3 to e4 or just re better saying removing it from c3 so you can afterwards for example after castles play c3 take a look at this position and if you just put this position into the engine, engine will shock you with the assessment, will see it's winning for white. I don't think it's winning for white. Practically, we're not even up a pawn. We only have like a one thing to play on. It's the bad knight on b6 on the queen side that does nothing. Well, we have an open f file, pretty much dragged minor pieces onto the king side and good chances to attack there. So uh, what should you do? Well, it's so obvious, you should play short castle, queen e1, queen g3, and bring your bishop back to d3 and go for the king side action and attack. That's why I'm of opinion that I have to take on c3. And when they take on c3, uh, this variation divides into two other variations. d takes c3, which I'm not going to show you here, where you open up like both of these bishops, and b takes c3. Uh, just like I told you, uh, Mihal Tal was like an older guy who used to play these variations and here we're not going to analyze that game but when we come to the game of Mihal Tal I'm just going to uh, let you know about the move he made in this position. After b takes c3 obviously we're just showing like a great tendency of playing d4 and getting and playing with the full center. It's very important to notice one more thing when you uh, recapture this b pawn afterwards in many positions because uh, black wants to just develop the light square bishop either to f5 or usually on g4 you will have like a very interesting idea with rook b1. Like I said sometimes it comes on b1 to prevent the development of the light square bishop bishop f5 or bishop g4 sometimes it just goes in order to weaken the b7 square and to go after that pawn uh, so don't forget about this idea it's going to be one of the crucial things in this system after b takes c3 um, i decided to teach you everything probably the most 
uh, solid and let's just say logical follow-up by black should be d6 because they just want to undermine the pawn structure but there are like bunch of moves here there is move like d5 uh, which is very logical and i expect on your you know on, on on your level to have mostly either d6 or d5 those are like two best moves in my opinion c5 could be also uh, done uh, usually by players who like like uh, sicilian or french uh, or a Karakian type of positions because sooner or later they will just go with some d5 and it is going to look like french and there is a very I would say suspicious move e6. I would say suspicious because if you want to play this position, if your opponent gives black chance to develop the light square bishop, probably he should take advantage of that and uh, play very logically there. Anyways, after e6, uh, I'll show you the game of Buckland, who's like a real master for these positions, and especially take a look at the plan. How do you play? usually and how do you uh, maneuver with your pieces especially on the king side when the light square bishop is locked on c8 so let's go d4 d5 knight f3 c5 what is this this is typical french win over system where they have the dark square bishop which is certainly like an improvement for black uh, and where we also have like uh possibility to uh, we, we we actually haven't wasted our time with a3 so we go bishop d3 because we immediately like to go with knight g5 and queen h5 and they have to prevent that with c4 after bishop e2 i would say that this was a clever way of provoking uh, c4 let's say he goes with knight c6 you play knight g5 that's so common idea in positions like this to play this knight g5 and for example if they play like this boom Queen h5, and they can't take because you take on h8. If they play g6, I mean, it's such an easy job. And finally, if they play queen e7, you play knight f7, followed by bishop g6, where you uh, win this lady. So, things because it happened to mean like hundreds of blitz and bullet games, and of course, you always go with this knight g5 and kill them very easily. That's why. I'm of opinion that black is actually forced to play c4 and you bring your bishop back to e2. Nowadays you have like many guys who would be tempted to go back with this bishop on f1 and play g3 h4 bishop h3. That also wouldn't be bad but let's take a look at the plan that Bucklan went for in this game after bishop e7. So here everything is based on plans nothing should be learned by heart you just uh, remember this game like a model game and say aha this is what Amaya told me that I'm supposed to go with this is the plan used in that game so h4 why to take the space to threaten h5 h6 so you're just getting some important uh, space on the king side and want to break on the dark squares pushing your pony one chili on h6 after h6 h5 clever move logical move uh, very uh, i'd say a part of your plan in these positions 96 and let's stop here and take a look at the plan for white uh, you can pause the video and try to uh, you know guess it by yourself uh, it's pretty difficult it's rook to h3 very nice way of re uh, moving this rook and uh, repositioning your pieces uh, in the best possible way so he's placing this rook onto g3 while well, this king goes on f1 and king goes on g1 this is a very nice way of making artificial castle while at the same time you just expand on the king side i like it queen a5 bishop d2 bishop d7 rook g3 bishop f8 king f1 long castles king g1 bishop e8 i would say that the first part of the game uh, has just ended for both sides and now one has to come up with some concrete, you know, like actions. So queen e1, I like this move. 
he over supports pawn on c3 uh, he stops knight d4 while uh, when sometimes in some positions knight you know we want to move this knight that's so obvious and it's gonna go here but i'll show you uh, why and why do we actually want it uh, to uh, put it there uh, but in some positions if you move the queen they will have some knight d4 queen takes d2 just like in Portish hook variation of the French defense. You know the line with in whenever knight c3, bishop b4, and when they go queen a5, queen a4 line. So after g5, you just go knight h2, going with this knight to g4 and f6, but at the same time opening and breaking along the f file with f4. I like this plan. Knight g4, bishop b7, queen f1. Now, when look at this, now when the move, uh, when the queen has left control of the a5 square and the di diagonal, uh, you, you can just appreciate yourself to have a move like uh, queen f1. Why? Because it gives you f4. Bishop d7, f4, e takes, sorry, g takes, bishop f4. And let's take a look at this position. He's got like, this is like typical principle of two weaknesses. He's got a weakness on h6, he's got to have, uh, uh, he, he has a weakness on f7. With those two weaknesses, all chances are on our side. So after rook g8, queen f3, bishop g5, knight f6. Nice move to win one of these bishops. After bishop f6, captured and took on f6. When the queen went to b8, queen a3 over supporting this pawn on d4 and slowly preparing himself for the final uh, break. e5, d takes, bishop e3, took on h6, played rook to d1, bishop g7, and all he has to do here is just to secure the way to remove this bishop from e4 and to win the game. You can take, uh, he couldn't take on h5 because of h7 and uh, after this black resigned. This game was played in Belgium 2003 uh, and I find it extremely good as a modal game. How is one supposed to play when black goes with e6, d5, c5, like French type of structures with imprisoned bishop on uh, c8, but at the same time, uh, like an improved version of uh, that uh, French variation and whenever variation port issue line where they usually play queen a5, queen a4. So you could have seen these plans, remember this game, and good luck with it. Let's go with c5. Just like I previously told you, whether they play d5 or c5, it always uh, goes into some sort of French Karakan type of positions as long as the light square bishop hasn't uh, came out yet. And finally, uh, there is also a possibility to discuss about some similar positions to Sicilian defense if they play some d6. Anyways, you always play f4 and uh, they go knight c6. I saw one game by older GM played in um, early 50s of the previous century, Bilek. Uh, he, his opponent played d6, Bilek played knight f3, knight c6, and do you remember part of this uh, lecture when I told you uh, you are supposed to consider uh, and to take advantage of the open b file in these positions. So b takes c3 doesn't only uh, benefit you with d4 and with like uh, expanding in the center, but at the same time you just want to go with rook to b1, opening up on the b file and going with like a great uh, initiative and tactics. After like rook b1, you prevent all these type of uh, lines with bishop f5 and bishop g4. If d takes, you just take by knight, you uh, pressure pawn on b7, you threaten bishop b5, you want to go afterwards castle and it's like a very very strong position for white. Don't worry, if they take, uh, you just have even easier development. Probably bishop b5 will come with tempi, short castle d4, uh, then you have queen f3 or and uh, it's almost undefendable type of game. I'm showing you a game uh, between Grandmaster Yudasin and uh, his opponent uh, who went in this game for this Jan Elvest, I mean famous uh, GM also. And uh, Elvest played knight c6, Yudasin played d4 and uh, this guy tried to improve, uh, to improve, sorry, um, this position playing d5 immediately because d6 would transpose into some of the lines that we're anyways going to analyze here. 
Scepter knight f3, bishop g4. Makes very much sense to develop this light square bishop and then to uh, complete development with e6. Bishop usually goes on e2. Bishop usually goes on e2 because you want to recapture by that bishop. You want to break the center with c4 afterwards. You want to use the bishop here. You want to use like g4 f5 ideas. And uh, it's very important to not to give them like always the c4 idea, especially when the light square bishop um, uh, came out. So after e6, in case of queen a5, don't you dare to defend the pawn on c3, just play castles. In case of queen b6, bishop e3, no big deal. So after e6, you just go castles, bishop e7, h3. If they take, you probably should take by bishop, threaten a c4 idea, probably with rook b1, bishop e3, and c4, unless black does c4 first. And you also probably have to bring your bishop back to g2, play g4, and f5, and break along the f file. In the game was h3, bishop h5, you does not play rook b1, always this idea, bishop e3, and he's slowly but surely making himself ready for some c4 breaks. For example, um, there is an interesting line if castles, just g4, bishop g6, and then you open up the center for, for your game. In case of c takes, c takes knight before, I especially like the c3 move, because if they take, you just go with check, knight c6, bishop d2, and boom, queen is gone. So this is like very, I mean, queen is not gone, queen can go here, but in that case, you can just take on uh, a3, take on b7, and uh, I mean, they have lots of difficulties in this position. And we also can consider some g4 and f5 ideas afterwards. In the game was c4, uh, g4, bishop g6, and once again, I came up for you with a modal game so you can learn how to treat uh, these positions rather than learning moves by heart. So what do you do, for example, if they manage to somehow uh, come out with this light square bishop, they don't want to give it up for the knight, they don't want to give up bishop pair, but they keep it like this. It's knight one plan. A beautiful idea, uh, because after knight e1 in the game was f6, f5, e takes g6, d takes e6, and knight g2 followed by knight f4. Beautiful game by Udasen played here. After queen a5, threaten c3, queen d2, king h1, bishop f2, once again good move in order to improve this bishop and go to g3, bishop g2 to open up the f file, bishop g3, and here bishop h2, removing from any threats like f5 or h5 by black. Uh, fantastic. Uh, maneuvering by black, look what he did. Uh, these bishops were on e2 on e3, so uh, reminds me on Thumbleweed in, in the desert. So uh, look how th these bishops went. Bishop f3, then after queen a5, bishop f2, so now we have these two bishops here, then we have bishop g2, and now we have these two bishops here. So it's a very funny way of uh, you know, like repositioning these bishops and actually getting better position. After rook g8, bishop h2, rook g5, rook b on e1, he finally did this bishop f3, uh, did some queen g2 afterwards, knight e6, and won the game. I'll briefly show you what happened in the game. Bishop c7, queen g2, knight d8, and he was winning. Uh, so after rook d8, bishop d8, knight c6, I'm just going a little bit faster. You'll have at home uh, enough time to check all these moves, uh, but this is just a modal game. How is one supposed to play these positions when the light square bishop came out and uh, when they actually go with that c5 move? After b takes c3, we just have to focus on d5 moves. Here I mentioned Tal in the beginning of this video, and I told you I'm not going to show you his approach because his approach is a little bit let's just say old-fashioned, uh, because he played bishop a3. Uh, he won that game against uh, Iverson. Uh, that's a nice game, just like in typical Tal style, he just dismantled his opponent. Uh, idea of this bishop a3 is just to stop e6, because in case of e6, you exchange these bishops, go with knight f3, and go with like typical ideas d4. I gave you just arrows here to fill the plan, move your knight to e1 back, play g3, play f4, play knight g2, and 
finally bring your knight to h4 and somehow try to push uh, <coughs> f5. <coughs> On the other hand, you can also play a4, followed by queen c1, queen a3. This is a bit better position for white. Although after bishop a3, uh, people like to play b6 with the idea of c5 and with the idea of harassing this bishop with queen d7, queen a4. You play some queen f3, and I analyze this with idea c4. Uh, I just, I'm just giving you ideas, if you like this move, bishop a3, to go for it. The best move is bishop f5, knight f3. Uh, in Chicago, that game between uh, Tal and Everson was e6, where Tal took, played rook b1, and killed his uh, opponent with queen g4, rook g8, c4, and in position like this. After knight d4, bishop g6, you just play e6 and you're better. Um, it's nice, it's worth of considering, although uh, in my practice against the Alekhine players, when you play bishop a3, they usually go with b6. Um, they want to play c5 to oppose this bishop on a3. Uh, I usually went with queen f3 with the idea of c4 and bringing my knight to h3 and going to f4. Uh, like pressuring d5 pawn or just going to g5 pressuring f7 pawn. Looks like after queen d7, they just do both at the same time. They want to go queen a4, uh, like I previously told you, harassing my bishop, or if knight h3, uh, they can go with some queen f5 or queen g4. White seems to be a very, very, uh, I'd say, mm, prosperous in this type of game. Uh, so if you like bishop a3, go with this stuff. Although my approach would go with something else, like a modern approach nowadays, it's what Grandmaster Buckland used to play, it's d4. So they have two moves, they have c5 to play kind of Karakan, kind of French, but as long as the, the, they haven't played e6, this is still like a Karakan type of position. Why? Because they have a possibility to develop this bishop. What happens if they immediately develop, which is bad? You just go with rook b1, it's very important precision, and after b6 you go knight e2. You you, you, you do like all these typical uh, Karakan type of moves, uh, preparing yourself for the action on the king side. How? After e6, knight g3, bishop g6, h4. Reminds me on the line in Karakan early, knight e2, knight g3. So when they play h5, you just go after the pawn on uh, h5 here. If they go with h6, you just go with h5, you just uh, go with f4, which is a very important move in terms of showing you what is our plan and what are we supposed to do. With the idea of breaking on the king's side, along the f file, and then uh, you always first give check to provoke the c6, then you bring your bishop back on d3, trade off these light square bishops, queen comes on g4, uh, you will certainly play short castle and support eventually break on the king side and with f5. Why is fantastic here? So once again, uh, I just had to show you like what's the plan for white and how does it look like and what do you have to do in order to uh, be able to kill these guys. If he plays c5, you go knight f3, and now once again we have a situation where they play knight c6. By the way, if they play e6, you just go for Buckland's plan from his game where he played that uh, that I showed you after early, I believe, fourth move e6 in the beginning of this video. So in case of bishop g4, you just go h3, bishop f3, you first include the small check, knight e6, queen f3, they have to play e6, otherwise you'll break with e6, and you play short castle. Positions after bishop c6, queen g3, where you, uh, no, when you don't allow this bishop to move, where you pressure g7 pawn, they have to play g6, bishop g5, bishop h6, and you stick your bishop uh, on h6, not allowing them to castle. Now we have more space, they have lots of difficulties, any bishop f8 you solve like this, you maybe even want to consider taking on f8 and taking on c5, uh, white seems to be better. So these type of positions, we just have to uh, consider being better for white. In case of knight d7 instead of knight c6, you go queen f3, six castles, you bring it back, play a4 to stop b5, but at the same time to fix these weaknesses at some point. And here we can go with bishop h6, but we can also go with uh, like 
it's not even bad, believe it or not, even though position is blocked, to take on e7, play a5, rook fb1, rook a2, and uh, uh, fixing the game. But, but I would keep these bishops and I would always somehow try to uh, go with, if, if, they, if they, you know, like constantly keep going with bishop f8, exchanging the bishop here, I would probably go back here on d2 or on e3, doesn't matter. I would probably play f4, move my queen somewhere, I'm not sure where, go with g4 and eventually break with f5. That always has to be your ideas in this, uh, idea in these positions. And in case of knight c6, bishop e2. Uh, there are f uh, three moves here for white, mm, rook b1, bishop e2 and bishop d3. There are guys who were like so afraid of bishop g4. You don't have to be played bishop e2. I'll show you something. Actually, um, uh, going across this variation and preparing this video, uh, for the first time in my career, I saw that two of my best students uh, play the game. This was a blitz game between Eric Hansen playing white and uh, ex-world uh, junior champion Alexander Ipatov playing black. The game was played in Rabat. Uh, 2014. So let me just show you what happened. After a c4, Eric played castles and I always insist on uh, similar plans to these ones. We could have seen what Buckland did in this game, but when? When the rook was on h1 and he, then he could, you, you can easily go with h4, h5, rook h3 and king goes artificially on g1 making like artificial castle. But here you already committed yourself with castle. Look what Eric did. Bishop e3, bishop e7, g3. Uh, I remember how he came up with this plan. We used to study the Karakan Ker um, advanced variation with knight f3, bishop e2, and short castle, and he was familiar with this type of plans. Played rook e1, played, okay, here a3, h4, expanding there. He probably wants to go with h5, h6, knight g5, knight h3, knight f4, uh, and after Ipatov played f6, Eric captured, brought his knight back to h2. Uh, for the first time, he threatens bishop h6 and bishop h5 to jeopardize this rook. Ipatov went for some craziness. Eric took the rook and uh, cold bloodedly uh, took advantage and realized this um, advantage afterwards being up on exchange. Perfectly played by Eric, who's uh, certainly my best student ever in terms of realization and look the way he did it here uh, rook f6 even though it was a blitz game he just did it in perfectly perfectly fine and uh, killed the pato very nicely uh, fantastic game by hansen so once again we could have seen how to play when it's type of french position in prison light square bishop but this time we had the king on g1 if the king was on e1, rook on h1, don't forget, you use the plan that we checked in the beginning of this video, used by Backman, play h4, h5, h6 if possible, go with rook h3, rook g3, place your king on g1, and go with eventually knight h2, knight g4, f4, breaking along the f file. Here, you just do this plan used by Eric. Eric did this rook e1, which I like so much. Uh, he's uh, fighting against f6. A very nice plan. After uh, h4, he wants to go with knight g5. Uh, he also wants to go, if in case of h6, knight h3, knight f4, but also wants to go knight h2 in case of f6. That's exactly what he did, and he used this knight h2 going after this rook on f8. Just because of this, people usually play bishop g4. On bishop g4, you play rook b1. We discussed about this move and importance of this rook. They have to defend it, and you play c4. Buckland played two games here against Almeida Quintana, uh, played in uh, Spain like uh, almost 15 years ago. And that guy played better than another guy, Schneider, uh, played in Belgium. In Belgium, this guy played c takes d4, which is a suspicious move here. So you just have to consider this uh, suspicious by black. This guy took on uh, d5. And after c takes d5, queen takes d5, Buckland took on b7. After e6 castles, bishop c5, crucial move was rook b5, and he couldn't stop c4 or just bishop a3, and black was lost. Uh, what a nice game in 13 moves to beat up like a guy who's almost an iron strength. And that's why d takes e4 is way better. 
Quintana played it, d5, bishop f3, and here I prepared novelty for you. Instead of bishop takes f3, I'm of opinion that you should take by pawn. I know it sounds like, and it looks absolutely unhealthy, and looks a little bit even crazy, but we just have to go uh, towards the modern intentions of chess. So we just have to play aggressively. Here we play with the bishop here, we don't care about the pawn structure, just like you remember the Nigel Short saying, I don't I don't care about the pawn structure, I just care about the mate. So that, that should be our approach here. After g takes f3, in case they take pawn, chase away the knight. Bishop c4, now we're threatening bishop e5 to win the queen. They have to play a6. In case of long castles, you play queen e2, you threaten bishop a6 once again to win on the spot. They have to play king b8, you play h4, uh, chasing this knight, uh, you just do it, take on e6, play with the bishop pair and open up both of our bishops. We're not even down a pawn here, then we have both of these bishops active, we have a b file open, we can even consider, I don't know, uh, like using rook h3, rook b3, uh, an amazing position for white. So after a6, um, d6, what an important move and White seems to be so much better with a full initiative in this type of games. You can just have fun at home analyzing this kind of things. I just gave you the novelty, just gave you the new idea. What else do you want from me? And uh, finally, uh, somebody said, what if knight d4? Um, I mean, somebody said, when I analyzed this with one of my students, so after bishop c4, you just take, grab the pawn back, defend, and they play queen f5. On queen f5, very nice move here happens. You just go castles, like cold-blooded reaction. If they take on f3 by queen, rook b7, you're winning. If they play, take by knight here, they never have queen h3 threat because of bishop f4, and you just secure the h2 pawn. In case of knight e5, bishop e5, king d8, and this is terrible position with the bishop pair with open files. Uh, I don't even want to discuss about this. And finally, in case of long castle, you just go king g2, uh, safeguarding uh, your king and this pawn on f3 at the same time, uh, trying to take advantage of bishop pair and white just looks so much better. All things considered, uh, they have to play d6. And like the best Alekhine players will, will usually go with this move. So after they go d6, you play f4 and they go uh, g6, c5 or knight c6 ideas. Those who play knight c6. I'll show you a game between Zvyagintsev and Savchenko. Uh, Zvyagintsev played d4, so it's not totally normal for black to treat this position in this fashion because they do not have like a full attack and pressure in the center with c5. So after rook b1, always consider that move. Uh, in the game was d takes, always take by f pawn, knight f3, bishop d3, and castles. After this, Vyagintsev played bishop g5 and had so much better game. Uh, just because of this, they probably, uh, after rook b1, uh, tried in one game, somebody tried rook b8 against me. Looks logical. I played queen f3. I'm threatening rook takes b7, uh, followed by queen c6. So this is a very nice tactical threat with a tempi. For example, in case of bishop c2, rook b7, I give check and you can stop bishop b5. So after d5, bishop d3, and if you take, I always take by c pawn. Why? So I can play f5. So if you play g6, I kill you with f5. If you play e6, I kill you with f5. As soon as we push this pawn up to f5, go home. So bishop d3, queen d7, you just go rook b5. What a nice move. So now, if you take on d3, okay, babe, I'll take on d5 first. If you play e6, okay as well, but then I take on f5 and d5. So you practically don't have a good way of defending these um, a triangle of pieces for black end. They are just in serious trouble. Very nice tactical motif to be remembered. So that's how you play if they go with this knight c6, which I don't consider good. If they take and play queen d5, like I want to immediately take your pawn, you just play d4, knight f3, bishop always goes on e2, we already elaborated that, castles, and if they c takes, c takes e6, rook b1, queen d7, and c3. I very much like this 
flexible bone mm. structure for white. Very much like the fact that we have an open uh, B file. And after bishop uh, e7, I can uh, just ask you, what would you play here? If your thoughts went towards knight g5 idea, then you're on a good track to learn this opening. So after knight g5, bishop uh, g5, bishop e2, castles, queen h5. I just want to use rook lifting and kill this guy. If, I, if it's my turn, I would even consider playing immediately bishop f6 because I don't think they can easily uh, defend there. But of course, if you just prepare that and do like a bunch of preparatory um, moves for white, then it could be even better. Uh, so that's the thing. Uh, in case of uh, d takes, f takes, and they go c5, now nothing changes. You just go knight f3 and you just go with uh, d4, uh, which transposes into the line. Uh, somebody asked me, isn't this probably the best way of playing with the black pieces? Because uh, we can play bishop d3, d4 is uh, hanging later. Uh, for example, bishop d3, they just take, of course, are, they are not going to take and fall for the famous French advance trick, uh, but they will go first with this stupid check. And when you play like this, now they will take and uh, go home. Uh, the point is, when you take on b4, they take on f3, and they go with this check, and bishop on b4 is hanging uh, with check for the king on e1. So, uh, after d4, e6, you got to remember this beautiful move queen to d3. I very much like keeping an eye on my pawn on d4. This is a very nice plan. This is a very nice idea. You control d4. You want to bring your queen onto the e4 and afterwards onto g4. You maybe want to use bishop d3, the battery. You maybe just want to play bishop e2 short castle. Very nice plan. And uh, I'm of opinion that after queen d3, all you need to remember, those are plans. Nothing else but that. And finally, if they uh, go in this position with c5, d4, d takes, f takes, knight c6, knight f3, and e6. Uh, we discussed this. I told you this was my novelty back to 2017, believe it or not. And just like I said, idea is to prevent further simplifications after c takes, d4, and bishop e4 by black. So let me just show you a game of mine. Um, uh, that that I played in this system. After bishop e7, bishop e2, castles, castles, and my opponent went with queen d5. I played rook to b1 to prevent development of this bishop and put some pressure on b7. My opponent went with a um, very greedy option, queen a2, and I said, no big deal, babe, knight g5. I'm threatening mate. Uh, I know that, I'm, that my rook is hanging, but he had to take. I took by bishop, uh, now my rook was defended, I was threatening queen g3 followed by bishop f6 or bishop h6 and he literally doesn't have a good way of defending himself. After the game I analyzed and tried to say what if b6, but knight g5 same approach with the idea of bishop f3 uh, kills the uh, black's game very easily. Uh, then one guy played instead of queen d5 played b6 immediately, queen e4 Typical way of improving queen when there is no knight on the king's side and to prepare the king's side attack. Bishop e7, bishop d3 threatening mate on h7. And after g6, bishop goes with a tempi there. After rook e8, boom, queen f4. You just want to remove your knight to g5 or d2. f7 is undefendable and uh, this is completely winning. All things considered, once again, I have to say that after d6, uh, f4, they probably should go with g6. Then you go with d4, bishop g7, knight f3, and here, uh, this is considered to be one of the most solid setups for black. Uh, very questionable is, should we place this bishop on c4, d3, or, or on e2? I believe it should go on e2. After c5, <coughs> castles. Let me show you now a couple of very beautiful games here. Uh, for example, Buckland's game. His opponent went with b6. Buckland played queen e1. Any d takes, f takes. And this, this queen e1 idea reminds me of Grand Prix attack. I want to play queen h4, f5, bishop h6, knight g5. That's why I like this system even more. d takes, f takes, bishop f5, queen h4. Uh, he threatens bishop h6, knight g5. The guy tried to stop it. Buckland played bishop g5. Uh, took 
and after this played knight g5. He didn't only threaten checkmate, but after this g4, so this guy immediately resigned. 16 moves. After castles, uh, they can also play c takes d4. I'm showing you a game that was played in Leningrad uh, like 30 years ago. Um, it's not that known game. These guys, um, actually white was an uh, unrated player, but these are Russians. Uh, even unrated guys are way better than most of us. So c takes d4, d takes, f takes, knight c6, and c3. Look at this, uh, once again, nice pawn structure. And this guy went with b6. What's the plan? Well, the bishop is open. Well, f file is open. Well, knight is here. So all systems are ready to go with a typical uh, GPA attack. Bishop b7, queen h4, rook c8, knight g5. Threatened mate on h7. Also pressuring f7 h6, played knight f3. Very interesting was knight f7, rook f7, bishop c4, queen f4, and to go with this system. But why would he go into position where he's certainly better and has a strong center, but playing against these bishops and three minor pieces, if he can go back and take advantage of this witness? g5 doesn't work now, because you just second its mate. So they have to play e6. And now, boom, bishop g5. It's nice to remember this idea. They can't capture because of knight g5. If they go like this, it's just checkmate. And after queen d5, you just take on h6, bishop d3, rook f2. What a beautiful move. I like this calm uh, move in order to mate his opponent. Thing is, you can't take the bishop on d3 because knight g5. And now you can't mate me anymore. Rook is defending on d, uh, g2 while you can't stop checkmate on h7. The guy played knight f5, bishop f5, rook f3, did the last attempt. And after bishop g6, he for completely forgot that the check is just older. And after rook f3 uh, being up on exchange, uh, this guy resigned because he couldn't stop Rook g1 followed by queen h4 and the king was mated. Uh, that's why I think instead of b6 where we play queen e1, instead of c takes uh, and a bunch of exchanging uh, of these pawns where we once again play queen e1, they should probably go with d takes, we play f takes, knight c6. And I analyzed, we can't manage to play queen e1 here, we first have to secure the pawn on b7. That's why we have to play, sorry, on d4. We have to play rook b1, uh, preventing, uh, attacking this pawn b7, preventing bishop g4 or bishop f5, and probably fighting for bishop e3 and the typical uh, gpa attack. Rook b8, bishop e3, bishop e6. I think you can go here with the gpa attack. I won one game in blitz. I played queen e1, bishop a2. I played queen h4, the guy played a6, which in my opinion, was stupid. I played knight g5 to provoke weakness, just like that Rus uh, Russian guy. Played knight h3 in case of g5. Uh, uh, in case of g5, of course, I would go with uh, bishop g5. Uh, he and on c takes, I take on h6 and knight g5 mate. So he played bishop e6. I played rook a to d1, like taking like complete. Mm, you know, like control of the center. The guy just played queen b6, I played king h1, removing my king into safety, and eventually I won this game in, in like next five or six moves, meaning my opponent. Uh, although if you don't like to uh, sack this pawn, you can just play a4 with pretty much the same ideas, queen e1 and queen h4. Hope you enjoyed this presentation of Samish attack against the Alakine defense, and it's absolutely what I, um, I'm pretty sure you're gonna like, and it's attacking chess. All the best. Bye-bye.